Welcome back. It's been a while since we've been uh, doing a video, but here we are cooking again and with a small tutorial about, you guessed it, steak. Steak cookery, in this case, we're doing a ribeye steak. My two favorites, of course, the ribeye and the New York. The New York has a more beefy, meatier taste. This is a little bit more tender, more juicy. The ribeye has the inner eye, which you see here, and this outer part here is part of the, the cap of the meat, which is a long loin, which you can get boneless or bone in. In this case, the bone has been removed. However, it's gonna be a very juicy steak. Why is this? Because of marbling. Marbling is the fat, this intramuscular, this intramuscular fat within the fiber of the muzzle that when you cook the steak, it renders and it provides uh, a lot of juiciness to the steak. This outer fat here, you can sear, you can caramelize, you can remove the excess fat, but it's not gonna harm at all. So quickly, we have a pan that's heating up. You want a high heat to sear the steak. You wanna lock in those flavors. Uh, and here's the trick for you. Uh, I don't like to overdo it with seasoning. I have some coarse salt. I have some uh, freshly cracked black pepper. I have some uh, just regular steak seasoning that I'm gonna do. And you might be asking yourself, what is this? This is baking soda. This is baking soda. A little bit of baking soda within the seasoning of the steak is gonna provide a change in the pH of the meat, therefore causing a more of the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is the process in which the sugars caramelize in the protein and it's gonna get a nice brown, deep brown and flavorful color. Uh, this will here is gonna be, so when we're cooking the steak, you'll see this in a little bit. So, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna do a little bit of salt. I'm using a coarse salt because when you cook the steak, the salt is gonna dissolve slowly, providing different levels of saltiness as you eat your steak. So season well the steak, cook properly at a good temperature, and let it rest. When you let the meat rest, it's gonna provide you with a better tasting product. Just a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, and we're gonna go on to uh, just a regular steak seasoning. You wanna make sure that you cover all the steak like such. And then with your fingers, you wanna make sure that you press the seasoning down in the meat. Why? Because you're gonna be flipping it over and you don't want this meat to lose all that wonderful seasoning. We're gonna go on the other side. Let me clean my hands really quick here. On the other side, I have not forgotten about the, the baking soda. We're gonna use that in a little bit. So we have, it looks like a lot of salt, but it's not, this is a big fat piece of meat. And it's gonna take a generous amount of salt for it to uh, be seasoned properly. We have that there. We have our steak seasoning. And again, we're going to press. Now, you grab some of this baking soda. It can clump up a little bit, but there's not a problem. And you just wanna drizzle some of this baking soda. It's not gonna change the flavor of it. Well, if it does, it's gonna be for good because it's gonna make a deeper caramelization. Flip it onto the other side. And repeat the process of a little bit of that baking soda. These leaner cuts of meats uh, really take on the, the caramelization when you do this. So if you haven't tried it before, I advise you to do so. So we're quickly gonna wash our hands here. Make sure that we properly clean our hands because for this video, I'm gonna to have to get my trusty apron because when you're searing meat, there is a possibility of a little bit of splattering of the fat and we want to prevent our clothing from getting uh, damaged and ruined. So again, what we're gonna need, 
the hardware that we're gonna need for for these is uh, any herb that you have. I like to use thyme a lot. One of my favorite herbs. You can use rosemary, you can use sage, but this is a very strong herb that's gonna take on a good amount of, of heat. I have a couple of smashed garlic cloves, and I have a, a wide spoon that's gonna be for, for basting in a little bit. And we're gonna retrieve here, we're gonna retrieve here a pad of butter that we have we had chilling in the, in the ice box to baste our steak. So it's seasoned. You can do this, you can leave it a couple hours, up to six hours or overnight. The flavor is uh, gonna be more intense, but this amount of seasoning that we have here is gonna give us a flavorful steak right away. So we're gonna move this bad boy over here. We have uh, one of our sides, this is another show, but we have one of our sides. In this case, I just wanna mention it to you so you'll be to stay tuned. This is a mac and cheese, no pasta. It's a cauliflower mac and cheese. So stay tuned because we're going to be doing this video uh, pretty soon. But for, for now, it's going in the oven. Okay, so our, our pan is hot, it's nice and hot. You want to go up to medium high heat. Not high because then you're going to burn the steak. But we're going to medium high heat. Um, it's going to get noisy, but you want to have some fan going because when you're cooking at the house and you're really cooking, you can set off the, the fire alarm, but don't panic, it's only, it's only momentarily. I have some good oil here that we're going to uh, coat the bottom of our pan with this oil. Now, very important, when you're gonna drop the meat into the pan, grab it like such. Why am I grabbing it like this? Because this will allow me to place it away, away from me, and if some fat, some oil splatters, it'll splatter away from me instead of splattering on top of me. So that is very important that you keep those tips in mind. You wanna make sure you have a nice uh, long uh, tongs because you're gonna be able to uh, deal with your steak a lot better. When you're cooking steak, you can be a little bit nosy. What I'm saying is that you can you can lift up your steak, allow that fat to go in there, okay? Make sure you move around so that oil can get in all those crevices, okay? You can lift up your steak like such, use the back of the pan to set the steak here so it can start rendering some of that fat. See right now, my steak is right there. I'm rendering that fat in there because that fat is flavorful, but you need to make sure it's cooked well, that part there. Because if not, you're gonna be eating on some chewy fat, which is not good. See how it caramelized? You can lift it again. Move your pan around. Move your meat around. I'm gonna give it a little bit more on this side. Always when you're cooking meat, the side that's your presentation side, the pretty side as we chefs like to call it, you wanna make sure it's deeply caramelized. If you're doing it in the grill, you wanna make sure it has nice grill marks because that tells the person that you care and that you're really cooking that food with some love. So the smell is telling me that it's almost ready to flip. So as soon as I flip, you're gonna see that deep caramelization. Look at that, that's beautiful, okay? So what are we gonna be doing now? As soon as you do this, you wanna drop your two garlic cloves in the oil. You wanna grab a nice hefty sprig of thyme and set it there. You can hear it as it sizzles. And you wanna grab your butter and let that butter start melting in there, okay? If you have a, a gas burner, you can also do this. You can tilt your pan and let all that butter start caramelizing 
and all these fats are gonna start taking the aroma and the flavor of the garlic and the herbs. So you're, you're making this sort of concoction in here that's gonna be wonderful and you're gonna start basting, basting your steak. You can even grab a couple of the herbs and put it on top. One of those garlic cloves and put it on top. I have another one down here and you can start basting your steak. Remember, it's still cooking in the bottom but you're making sure that color is nice and deep. Make sure I have my timer set for the, for the oven. And we go back here, just basting. You wanna make sure that you put the oil away from you so it's not gonna splatter on you. How long is it gonna take? Well, it depends. It depends on how cooked you want your steak. And I'm gonna give you a little, a little tip of advice. You hold your hand like this and you touch this part of the hand, this is gonna be kinda raw. This would be rare. This would be medium. This would be medium well, and when you put these two fingers together and you touch, that will be well done. That's the texture that you're looking for in your steak. So why do I like to look? This, these two, that's a perfect medium. But I'm gonna remove my steak when it's medium rare because it's gonna have time to rest, the temperature's gonna keep rising, and the meat is gonna continue to cook for a period of time. I can lower it to medium now, and I can continue to baste the steak. You can see that color, that deep color that it's taking, and that's the caramelization, the nuttiness of the butter. At this point, I can remove all this down here. Look at that beauty. That extreme caramelization is caused by the pH that's been regulated by the baking soda. And remember, some of the seasoning may have fallen, but we're catching it back here and we are reinserting it, okay? So I did like a minute, minute and so on this side. I'm gonna cook it for another two minutes. And the word of advice is that you rest the steak for the same amount of time that you cooked it. So I'm gonna cook it total time about four minutes and then I'm gonna rest it for another four minutes. The temperature's gonna be equalized in the center. The juices are gonna be redistributed in the middle. And when you cut that steak, it's gonna be juicy and the juices are not gonna be in the cutting board because that's not good. So, I have a little bit more of facing here. We're gonna go on a brief pause. When we come back, it's gonna be all ready to go, rest it, and it's gonna be ready to cut the steak. So don't go far, come back, and we're gonna cut the steak in a little bit. Stay tuned. Okay, so, like the French would say, the piece of resistance. This is it. This is the ribeye steak. It's been cooked. It's been rested. The moment of truth, we're gonna cut into it, okay? We've let it rest, like I said earlier, to make those juices redistribute all the way to the center of the steak. And when we cut it, we're not gonna make a whole lot of mess, we hope, in the cutting board. This fat right here, I'll eat it, but for presentation purposes, you can discard it. Oh, and you can see how it's looking inside already. We're already looking good. This is, I'm gonna set it this on side. When you're cutting a steak, it could be hot, so use a pair of tongs. And I just use it to hold my steak down. Use a very sharp knife. Don't hack the meat. Let the knife do the work for you. I like to cut it in a bias, in a 45 degree angle, just to make the experience more pleasant, and more um, juicier, okay? So look at that inside, a perfect medium. And we're gonna keep, keep cutting the ribeye and strips. Of course, if you're very hungry, you can eat all this by yourself, but this can feed a small family as well. So you can, you can hear how it cuts that crust. Still nice and juicy. You don't see a lot of juices running across the board. That means we did a good job on searing the meat and resting the meat. So, put my knife right here, 
or with the same knife, you can come and kind of spread. You can spread your meat like that to show the meat in the inside. We can take a little peek, look at that. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful steak. Turning off my timer there. That's really wonderful. So after you cut, after you cut your steak, remember we season liberally the outside part, but the inside part still needs a little bit of love. So we have some of that same salt. We're gonna grab just a little bit, and no, I'm not gonna do the, the salt bay kind of thing. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt here. This salt is gonna actually start to dissolve slowly within the steak, and when you eat your steak, it's gonna be nice and flavorful. Feel free to shoot me a message on my Food Tactics page on Facebook. Subscribe to this uh, channel if you have not done it yet. Share the video so others can take advantage of these tutorials. And as always, God bless you and keep cooking. Stay tuned.